Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. If you took the 90s Roland Sound Canvas synthesizers and put them into a small box the size of a videotape cassette and added battery support and a powerful sequencer, then you probably end up with the Yamaha QY100. This is a portal box from 2001 and we're going to take a look at that today. The QI series started in 1990 with the release of the QI-10, which was the equivalent of a musical Game Boy. The Series 100 here was the pinnacle of these handheld sequencers. Released in 2001, it boasted 32 voices of polyphony, that's more than all of the Kirk Volkers combined, and also a 24-part multi-timbrality. This is an extended general MIDI compliance machine, so you can choose from over 500 preset sounds, but its sound shaping possibilities, while there, are not as fleshed out as those on other synthesizers. The QY100 can run on AA batteries for around 4 to 6 hours, in my experience. I made quite the bargain with this QY100 here. It's fully working and it's in a very good shape, besides some minor scratches. The only thing in need of service is its memory battery, so let's exchange that one first. You'll need a standard CR32 battery for this. Begin by removing the five screws on the back side of the unit. You can now lift up the back cover, exposing this copper foil. Remove the two screws holding this in place and now you can easily exchange the battery. Once that is done, take some time to admire Yamaha's early 2000s high tech here and then reassemble the unit and turn it on. The error message should now be gone. So this is my QI100, a miniature synthesizer workstation from 2001. It's a sequencer and it's a synthesizer module and there's also an audio input for a guitar or microphone so you can use the internal effects for live performances accompanying your synth tracks. So on the back of the machine there's an audio input, a gain knob, contrast setting for the screen, a foot switch plug, MIDI in and out, a PC host interface and a selector switch for the interface you want to use. And there's also a 3.5 stereo audio out and power in. On the front there's a liquid crystal display, which is fairly large but unfortunately without backlight. These two buttons are for setting up guitar and vocal effects. And in typical Yamaha 2000s fashion, there's a song sequencer and a pattern sequencer here. And everyone who followed my EX5 or RS7000 videos will know how these work, basically. Shift and Exit are needed for navigating the menus. This keyboard here can be used for playing notes and entering chords, more on that later, and there is an octave switch on the left here. Over here we find the sequencer control buttons, record, rewind, stop, play and cue. Here is the memory card access button, this machine can read and write smart media cards, which are becoming rarer these days. The menu button will open up context sensitive menus depending on which screen you're working on. You can then use these four buttons over here to access various utilities. Press exit to get to the previous screen. The buttons in the top right are used for moving the cursor around, decreasing and increasing and entering numbers. By the way, if you like this video and my other videos, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Seeing the subscriber numbers grow makes me happy and keeps me motivated to post more videos of this type. So if you want to see more videos on boxes like these, please hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at the sequence first. You can use up to 16 MIDI tracks and in typical Yamaha early 2000s fashion there's song mode and there's pattern mode. A song can be made up from patterns and I'll create a pattern first. Press the pattern button and we'll create an intro, so move the cursor here and press the intro button. On this overview screen you can see your MIDI tracks on the bottom half. 
pattern length can be adjusted up here, but we'll leave it at two measures for now. Tempo is 120 beats per minute, and this pattern is using a chord feature, a thing I'll talk about in a later video. We begin by selecting a drum kit. Press the pattern button once again to access the mixer screen. Move the cursor to the voice line and select the sound by pressing plus or minus. I'll use this one. Return to the main screen by pressing the pattern button two more times and we'll use the step sequencer to enter a simple drum beat. Press the record button, move the cursor over here to step mode and press enter and then press play. And I'll adjust the note length here to an eighth note and now I'll just play the steps on the keyboard. Now press stop and push play to listen. Let's add a bass track. Move the cursor to the second track, press the pattern button once again and choose a bass sound as before. I like this one. Once again, go back to the main screen, press record, adjust the octave range on the keyboard and record a short bass line on the step sequencer. This time I'm using 16th notes. The four buttons right of the screen can be used to delete wrong notes or insert rests. That note was wrong, let's delete it. Oops. Wrong again. Let's listen. As you can hear, the step sequencer also records the velocity, and as velocity is tied to filter cutter frequency on this sound, we get this nice filter movement here. Now let's record a pad sound and we're done here. Once again go to the mixer screen and select the sound on the third channel now. I'll use this typical general MIDI sound named Etopia. And this time we'll use overdub recording mode on the recording screen, just press record and play after the metronome count in. Here's what we have so far. I'm going to create verse, chorus and bridge patterns off screen now and I'll see you later when it's done. So yeah, Yamaha was quite ahead of the curve once again in the early 2000s and now 20 years later, if only there was a portable small box you can make music on. Hmm. Oh well. Okay, I've recorded six patterns of music now and before I arranged them into a song, I want to show you a thing that you can do with a sequencer here. Here's one of my patterns with a normal warm pad playing along. Now I'll add a pumping effect to that pad by using the sequencer's continuous data function. On the track, press Menu, then Job, then select Create Continuous Data. We now will insert a volume control change on every half note, that means every 240 ticks. We'll set a start and end range to the same value around 100. Press Enter, and now our track is filled with the volume information that's all the same. Now return to that function and insert volume change controls on every full beat, but this time reduce the volume to around 60. Now we need to remove the redundant volume information and luckily there's a cleanup function here. Use that once on the CC data and now 
we've got some nice clean rhythmic volume changes that sound quite a bit like a side chaining effect. Now, I'll arrange the patterns I made into a song. Press the song button and then move the cursor to the PT icon, which symbolizes the pattern track. The easiest way to do this, once again, is step recording. Press record, select step, and then press play. In the left column is the measure the pattern should start playing at. The middle column displays the bank your pattern is stored in, and the right column is for selecting the actual pattern. We can navigate these columns with a cross pad and change the values with plus and minus. My patterns are 8 bars long, so I'll start a new pattern every 8th measure. The nice thing is you can use all the other tracks in the song sequencer for recording additional stuff, and I'll use that for a lead sound in this demo. And while we're here, let's use that guitar input too. I'll use a bit of chorus on the guitar sound. And that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful and interesting, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye!